I don't think that <laughs> Jesus don't done it that, that way. way. Hey, what's that part? What's the part? Blame me and shame me. Uh, man, we got to get you to learn the chords. I, I bet well, you, you know it. what? I pulled up the little tabs thing yeah. on YouTube and I stopped it after the first minute because um, the dude's trying to instruct. He's like, well, first it's like. Like oh some, yeah, the intro intro is a little different. Yeah, it was some complicated shit. Yeah, and I'm like, nah, fuck, fuck that song. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to Itsy Bitsy Spider. <laughs> Happy birthday, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to RPT. Uh, sorry for that random intro. We actually have a special guest on today, conservative ant. That was a fun, fun episode. It, it was light. Dude, his personality is just so yeah. like bubbly. <laughs> oh man, dude. If my wife ever meets him, yeah, it's gonna be like, hey guys, I'm gonna be the third wheel for sure. Because they're going to be chit-chatting like the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure she's going to love this episode. Uh, and you will, too. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. We've got a you know a little bit of housekeeping and stuff like that at yep. the top. Um, so we had a meeting yesterday mm -hmm. where we were discussing, like, the vision, the future of the podcast network. Because that's what we're building, y'all. We're trying to build a podcast network. Yeah. This is all, like, catalog, intellectual property. We have to make sure we keep all the files from all the episodes. In case Spotify want to holler at your boy. Yeah. You never know, or somebody. Dude, as of this morning, I filled up, I think, uh, the one, I had two hard drives, right, that's dedicated to podcast audios and videos and clips and all that, and I think it's like two or three terabytes worth of content. God damn. It's a lot of content. Like, if you know hard drives, one, they're not cheap, but it's not even that. It's just the amount of space that a terabyte is, right? Yeah, it's that's To a have lot. two of those of just, in my opinion, fire-ass content fire. that eventually will be, you know, replayed years down the line. And they're going to, can you imagine that, bro? You're going to be in the future and be like, man, in history, like, Jim like Blink yeah. was doing, you know, X, Y, Z. They're going to be like, no, this is how they're going to be. They're going to be like, America has been transformed. Yeah. The world has been turned on its head. Yep. We went from like decentralized to centralized. Now there's like this, the China coin, like the Bitcoin of China oh, that God, we're all going to have to get Don't on. Don't say that. Like, we're all on social credit score, ESG, uh, firewall on the internet. You can't access certain things. And they're going to have to pinpoint, like, when did everything start to shift? It's been like around 2020 or yeah. so. You referenced the show, uh, the episode No New Wars that you had put up uh, that was, I guess, behind a pay one of our Patreon yeah, episodes. And yeah. S. Sparky in the Discord had taken a screenshot of one of the comments. And he was like, man, they're starting. He even noticed. He's like, this one's getting a lot of views and a lot of comments. And he posted because a screenshot. Because war. So it, here's the thing is we tend to be ahead of the curve mm -hmm. a lot. So like, for example, I was just bored. I have these apps on my phone. I swear I'm going to, I'm getting a new phone. I think maybe today nice. and I'm going to make sure none of these apps, maybe YouTube, YouTube's fine, right? It's not as toxic and I can still get you can on. You learn it. stuff. You can learn chords. Yeah. And then you have like create, watch jujitsu tutorials. Yep. And then you have like creator studio, whatever that is. You can check your analytics, see if your subscribers are going up. It's not know. the same as having Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, right? Twitter and Insta mainly Instagram, too. It's just a time suck, you know, because they're real good with their algorithm. They want you to, oh, next thing you know, you're going scroll, down, this, scroll, scroll. down this rabbit hole, and now you're getting triggered off these comments. Now you're blocking these people. But to bring it back to what we're saying, mm -hmm. uh, our vision is, you know, obviously when, you know, we'd want the tour to be like theaters. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey. We figuring out the promotion side. That's a lot of work. It's, it's a pain in the ass because I'll be spamming y'all. And the minute I leave Tacoma, people be like, when you come into the Pacific Northwest? Yeah. Or the minute I leave Florida, let me know when you come to West Palm. It's like, bro, that was last week. You know? So, hey, that's the story of my life. I don't know if I'm shadow banned. I don't know if I'm canceled. But regardless of that, we want to make sure that, like, we would love to double down on podcasting. I wouldn't mind having a variety of shows mm -hmm. and just a, a whole network where it's like me and a comedian or me and me robbing and somebody else or, or something that I, a series that I do just via zoom. It's yeah. just like, boom, each season I got all these different people zooming in, uh, which is probably what I should have done during the pandemic, but I couldn't get my fucking wires in order. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's the vision man is all the patrons. We have c come up with an idea to where you guys and, and the, and the patrons to come, can be like the founding fathers of what we're building this yeah. next chapter uh we envision like a um a facility uh, um a building with studios in it a variety of just you know you got your, a conference room your photography room your video you can have multiple shows different people kind of like um tom segura yeah uh, your mom's yeah. house ymh studios uh andrew Schaub. he i feel like Schaub, andrew Schaub, you combine the two of them well, oh my bad, Andrew Schaub. Uh, <laughs> Brendan, yeah, Brendan Schaub. I feel like, 
I feel like Brandon got too much, like too many people. You know what I mean? It feels if because a lot you, of cooks in that kitchen. Yeah, because you look at Rogan, it's like okay, it's him, Jamie, and maybe another motherfucker, and like three Navy SEALs that are guards. Yes, and and Marshall the dog, your security. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's really just Joe and a handful of people. Yeah. But Shab, obviously, he's approaching it where he's like, I got vlogs, I got YouTube, I got the king and the wing and the sting and this <laughs> and that. And this guy, and he's doing this, and I'm touring. And it's like, bro, when are you yeah. chilling? When do you chill? Yeah. So, he's got a family. He's got a wife and kids and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, obviously, he's got to chill sometime. But it, but anyway, um, that's what we envision. Yeah. And part of it, like, kind of to start was releasing this episode that you listen to now is the Monday episode. This used to be a premium chingo chat that would go behind the paywall, but we got to basically give the people what they want and RPT is what it is. So focusing on that, there's now a third show, which is basically a second bonus episode that you only get if you're a patron. So that means you get the free ones on Wednesdays and Fridays you get one and then Mondays you get one. Thursday, there's still chingo chat. We're going to talk about that too, probably after this and see what direction that show goes. But a lot of this also, what it has to do with is people are getting canceled, people are getting deplatformed, and you have to have a contingency plan of how you go about navigating the web, mm-hmm. aka the world, if that happens to you. Yeah, like like for example, if y'all watch Russell Brand videos, he's always like, give me your email just in case. Oh yeah. We're on that too. If you go to chingobling.com, join the newsletter, sign up, give us your email, join the newsletter. We don't like spam. We don't want to spam you. It's just a plan B. Uh, like Jocko Willink, he has Jocko Underground. Yeah. Where he's like, we want to mitigate our dependency upon these platforms. Because for all I know, bro, I might be shadow banned on Twitter. We see it all the time where you get these James O'Keefe Project Veritas clips of like some Twitter engineer drunk on a Tinder date. And he's like, oh yeah, we could just click a couple buttons. Yeah. And the person will not even know they're tweeting their heart out. Talking about Corpus Christi, I'm coming. You know, don't forget New Braunfels, Arlington. It's like... He don't even know. Ain't nobody seeing this shit. May 5th. Jingleblee.com right now. Literally, really. No, seriously. May 5th through the 7th. Yeah, don't be. Yeah, don't uh, miss it. Uh, the new location, Mesquite Comedy Club. It's on the south side. I think it's on Staples. But yeah, new location. Oh, dope. Yeah, so um, so that's where we're at with it. Uh, of course, big shout out to the OG patrons. Uh, if you want to sign up, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. So we are on Patreon. Mm-hmm. For the time being, because yeah. literally no one is safe. Yeah, no. Inevitably, what it has to be, too, is that, and everyone's going to find this out, um, and I'll bring this up in a second, somebody that, that was on the left that just basically, you know, the snake was eating its own tail example, but uh, the platforms have all the power, and if you don't play by their rules, you get kicked off. And if you're a fan of capitalism and just your private entities and whatever, free speech, free speech, you also have to say, all right, you're right. They have the right to do that. But we don't have to use these platforms. Once everybody builds their own decentralized kind of method or ability to just communicate with their audience or their fans, then that's what it is. They're going to pay for that stuff because they want to follow that person and pay for that content and, and pay for that mission, honestly. Like these people that support the Daily Wire and Timcast and Mug Club and all these other outlets do it. Temple. Temple, yeah, the, that, that's Timcast. Uh, oh, my bad. Is uh, for the mission, right? They love the content. But a lot of people will either super chat them or always message them that like or, or leave comments that we're doing this for the mission, right? Mm-hmm. When Libs of TikTok gets canceled, people step up. Crowder did an entire episode on how they're supporting Libs of TikTok. So they already added her name. And I, I, I don't want to butcher it, but I think it was like Shia, I believe is her name. She's a real estate agent out of New York. She got doxxed. Mm-hmm. She's literally like holed up in a safe location because this that many people on the left are trying to ruin this woman's life. That's how they behave. The extreme radicals on yeah. the left. Not even just her account. They're trying to ruin her life. When's the last time you seen people on the right doing that? Give me one example. I really can't think of none. Of course, some people are gonna be like, Well, there's militias and there's proud boys. Oh shit. Or there's shut those up. crazy uh those those crazy Southern Baptists. You know, oh, the four people that are left at West, ba- what, what is it? West, ba- West Baparole Church or what is it? West Bass? Whatever it is. I don't know what church that is. You know, the one with the cult, the fucking uh... Branch Covidians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wrong cult. <laughs> wrong cult. I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, West Bow. What the fuck? See, we're having a hard time coming up with extremists on the right. Yeah, you're right. And I'm pretty sure they exist, right? Some people that are like super anti-government, which I don't knock them for that. For sure. Know? I don't knock them for wanting to be off the grid and shit. But a lot of it is just made up for example they uh this man right here is hard pressed trying to make you be afraid of uh white boys with guns they're always like white uh, seriously no hyperbole folks yeah uh F- fbi already said white boys with guns white supremacists and this and that and it's like well every time i look up it's black supremacists 
and all kind of other supremacists. You probably even have some brown supremacists out there that are super anti-white people, racist. They love to play victim. Westboro, the Westboro Baptist Church, the I ones that always, that. the ones that are always picketing at like, uh, like gay events, and they're all like anti-gay, anti, -gay, anti mm. You know what I'm talking about? They're like closed-minded yeah, to some of that stuff. There's okay. like four of those people left. So there's like mm. an example. I think they're they're touted as like some kind of crazy right. Hey, right according to Joseph Raheem Breezy. Joseph Raheem Biden, he said Antifa is just an idea. It's just an idea. Antifa is an idea. Come on, man. Come on, man. Antifa is an idea. Along with the, the the fucking terabytes of content we've put out, I'm telling you, those 2020, 20, you know, uh, speeches and debates with uh, with Trump are going to be played in whatever metaverse university <laughs> in the future about, like, look what happened during this time. It's insane. That's if we still have free discourse or free speech. But speaking of the two terabytes, a lot of that is behind paywall a lot of it is like unlisted private link so the patrons right now are the only ones that can access it and uh and that's why we're, we're hitting y'all up and letting y'all know that uh that's the vision if you want to grow with us and you want to get in on the ground floor you could be the founding fathers and we're gonna come up with a cool way to make sure you get credit and your name is on display. Yeah, I'm trying to come up with a, uh, I'm talking to somebody to help me bring this idea to a visual aspect so that we can post about it and show it somewhere so that people know like what we're working towards. For sure. Yeah, I dig it, man. Uh, but yeah, this conservative ant episode is coming up. Uh, very funny, man. I used to follow him on TikTok back when I was on, well, I have a TikTok page, but I don't have the app on my phone, right? Proud of you. I don't think I have that app on my phone. No, you don't. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think he's on there anymore. Something happened. I think he got kicked off for like dumb shit. And that's the thing. A lot of these platforms, sure, they have their terms and conditions. But a lot of times they're 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 giving you strikes over bullshit. Yeah. Um, my boy XG lost his Instagram page because he posted a Disney groomers T-shirt. Boom. That was it for you. I left a comment on uh, I think it was S.A. Sparky or Scribe. Somebody on the Instagram. I left them a comment. I said, B what's up, big da? Boom, strike. Can't say that. It's bullying. We got to find another way to spell that. And I, I don't know. That's the thing, too. They don't really tell you how to uh, rectify or remedy it. They just want you to not know. Uh, Washington Post backs Taylor Lorenz over the doxing of libs and TikTok. That's a damn shame, man. I don't know. I don't know how Washington Post can argue that that's that's okay well who run who who bought washington post jeff bezos so if you had the choice of jeff bezos or um i say bezos i know it's hilarious on I, purpose i know I, just, I can't say it it sounds so silly jeff bezos <laughs> bezos yeah i say it like kevin hart says it when i met jeff bezos <laughs> <laughs> jeff bezos <laughs> um um yeah and i was like jeff um um is that cat or is that you no know, that, that's that's uh that's my kevin hart okay uh no uh who would you rather have in power elon musk or Jeff Bezos. I'm a little skeptical of Elon Musk still. I'm not gonna pull out my pom pom. Oh, I'm too. You can but, go back. But, but yeah, I mean, I mean, just just the idea of billionaires owning newspapers. There's already gonna be a conflict of interest. Newspapers, uh, media out, you know, media fucking uh, platforms like this. It's all the same. And you can go back. There's tons of episodes. Chris Hines has been on, and I, I've brought it up subtly with him. But he goes on full episodes where it's very interesting the stuff he knows about elon musk's past and history and his china dealings and all that he's still backed by china oh yeah oh yeah and he's a transhumanist well yeah i guess because with neuralink, neuralink and yeah, all that neuralink and yeah yeah, yeah. that the transhumanism conversation is, i know it's very uh very taboo on the right and uh if you listen to war room which i love it's Steve tempting Bannon, it's tempting though because it's kind of like the, sorry to cut you off the, no, way, no, good. the way elon sells it is like you have information and you're trying to suck it through a straw and we're trying to make it to where all you got to do is cut out a little hole the size of a quarter and we we put a little implant thing and now you can just access stuff and everything and it, it sounds cool no it does and i also think it's inevitable honestly yeah if, mm -hmm. if if you believe and i do that this is some sort of a simulation if you want to get to let me just throw this out there saying as a hypothetical get closer to god and god is the creator of the simulation you got to jump in the oh, you're trying, to, gotta oh, take you're over trying to frame it like that my boy i mean think about it mm. think about it yeah you want to be a real christian you know what I'm saying? Put the neural link. Dude, Eddie Bravo just came out with a podcast. He made his return to podcasting. Okay. It's called Look Into It. Look Into we It. We got to get That's him on a great the show. Name. That's a great name. Yeah. Oh, great show. Great name, especially for him. So hopefully he'll do like a little PR run to promote mm -hmm. his new podcast. And uh, we got to get him on here. Okay. I'll ask him. I'll be like, hey, man, I hear you got the Look, look Into It coming out. Uh, let's let my people know. And, and that uh, way they can look into it. Chime in. You know what I'm saying? Sensei. And I can bring my white belt. You can bring your black belt. Dude, we need to make that collab happen. Yeah. Dude, I didn't make it to jujitsu last night. 
¿Por qué? Es una historia larga. I got this little bad bite on my ankle, like this little rash thing. And I, ain't, I don't know if I'm contagious. I don't want to spread that shit on the mats. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's always something. Last Tuesday, it was taxes. Right. Yeah. So, hey, there's always tutorials. But uh, <laughs> uh, don't forget, guys, I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm not just a five-star athlete. I'm not just a combat sports. Uh, you know, I'm not a cage fighter yeah. all the time. So Legalize Freedom Tour. Uh, hey, man, you motherfuckers need to goddamn come out because I got my Texas dates coming up. I, I, I can think under- markets are starting. Yeah, man. I can understand Tacoma being a little light. It's a Thursday. I can understand West Palm Beach. Motherfucker, you coming on on a Sunday. Yeah. I, I can understand that. But we have Corpus Christi, Texas, May 5th through the 7th. Get your tickets now. Arlington Improv, that is May 12th through the 15th. New Braunfels, Texas, May 20th. Lubbock, Texas, May 22nd. Bryan, Texas, two shows, May 28th. San Angelo, June 3rd. Odessa, June 4th. Austin, June 9th. Albuquerque, June 15th. El Paso, June 16th through the 18th. I would like to podcast more, but uh, I am a stand-up comedian. I am on tour, so uh, y'all let me know. Motherfucker, stay home. We ain't fucking with you. I know California always fucks with me, dog. Irvine be packed. I'm not going to lie. Ontario, bro, like when we're doing taxes, we're looking at, we're like, yo, how, my wife was like, how many shows was this? I was like, I think that was just one. So shout out to Ontario. Always showing love. Uh, get your tickets now. Just go to chingobling.com. We also have Denver, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, San Jose, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison. And of course, I'm working on a venue for my hometown. That is correct. Chingo Bling does not have anything scheduled for his hometown in Houston. His number one market. There's nothing. At the moment. But there's going to be. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. I'm not at, at liberty of telling you why. So I don't have a venue. That's another rabbit hole. Yeah, it's a whole other rabbit hole. I don't want to speculate. So uh, I guess on this, uh, on this, in this, I don't know what the fuck I'm trying it's to say. It's a good segue into the. Uh, yeah, you got to just let them enjoy the episode now. Yeah, that's it, man. We kept you on the hook long enough. Without further, fur, further ado, <laughs> without further ado, <laughs> yeah, without, without further ado, enjoy this. It, it's light, but uh, we still tackle some stuff. Uh, very funny. Big shout out to Conservative Ant. And without further ado, here it is. Sass. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of RPT. This is going to be a fun, uh, uh, I already know, it's going to be an entertaining episode. <laughs> uh, I am your host, Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up? Back in the background. Uh, today we have a special guest. Because, um, you know, sometimes talking about all this crap, all these debacles. It makes your blood pressure go up. I'm turning into that 42-year-old crazy old man that just like, stay off my lawn. Yeah, you're like Clint Eastwood already, and you're only 40. Yeah, I, I, I like be trying to like test TSA. Like, you know what I'm saying? Luckily, the mask thing went away. But I'm like Chris, uh, was it Chris Tucker versus Debo? <laughs> like, yeah, I keep that shit around my chin. As soon as TSA ain't looking, it's hanging from my ear. How many times did they stay <laughs> out of line? Only one, only one time TSA tried to check me. But today we have a very special guest, man. Uh, I've been following this cat for a minute on TikTok and Instagram, and I think you're off of TikTok, but we have conservative ant in the building. What's up, bro? What up? What up, guys? Representing Thanks for having me on today, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah, man. Um, when I performed in Naples, I was hoping, but I was there like on a Wednesday or something, but uh, I wanted Ant and his people to come through. Uh, but it's all good, man. We uh we're very grateful to have you on the show and it's gonna be fun, man. So uh, how's everything in Southwest Florida, brother? You know, we are very blessed to live in Southwest Florida. We got that uh, we got that freedom that everybody else has been wanting for so long out there, uh, out in the U.S. And uh, it's just great. People down here got a different mindset, man. Uh, they 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 got colions. You know? <laughs> what is that Italian? Yeah, that means balls. Yeah, it sounds like cojones. <laughs> it's like the same thing. Yeah, we say colions. Corleones. Okay. Italy first around this motherfucker. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so check this out, man. Speaking of what, what you just mentioned, when I was in Southwest Florida, I got the sense that some of the people took their freedom for granted. Like they didn't appreciate their governor. Like, for example, I did a morning show. Uh, we drove straight in, dude. I had to go do morning radio. And uh, I could tell these were some very like liberal folks, super progressive. And they're like, so you have a podcast. Tell us about that. And it's like, it's called Red Pill Tamales. And they're like, are you on there saying, let's go, Brandon? I was like, actually, yeah, we do like to call out what's going on. But I I just got the sense that some people didn't have their businesses crushed by the lockdown and have no idea how good y'all have it. Like, I mean, even, even as a Texan, like we love our governor. You know, we love the freedoms and stuff we have. However, a lot of people feel like, bro, we need to yeah. be way more like Florida because 
DeSantis is on the offense all the time. Um, he's always just well, like finding very productive things to do. Well, that's just it. You know, like I, first off, I've, I've traveled to Texas often because I've done Fort Worth, Dallas, Longview. Um, so I did a couple of, uh, Chad Prather was running against Governor Abbott, asked me to come out. Uh, those of you that don't know Chad Prather, he's, he's also known for stand up or, or some of the stand up stuff. So I noticed when I was in Texas, like, yeah, the governor is, is okay, but like, there were way more people wearing masks in Texas than I've ever seen in all of Florida. And I'm thinking to myself, what's up? Like, this is supposed to be everyone's like, oh, Texas, Texas. And I'm like, uh, y'all need to come to Florida. Here's, here's the thing is, when you go to other parts of the country from Florida, that's when you start to realize you're like, oh, damn this shit's real. Like the pandemic is like, they're really locking people down because we don't have any idea down here. Yeah. Y'all could still go get a sandwich. You know what I mean? You can yeah. still walk in, eat, get your haircut. Yeah. Well, and even when they shut them down for 30, the, you know, nationwide lockdown for 30 days, all of our parks and recreation was open. All the beaches. I mean, I came from Chicago. Like that's why I I'm a refugee from Illinois. Yeah. Uh, we, we like to say that we're refugees. Anybody that came from a lockdown state and they did. They even closed the parks. You couldn't walk around along the lakefront in downtown Chicago. Like, bro, why? Why? It's yeah, it's it makes it's like backward science. It's like no science, no data, no studies. None of it made sense. They made you like hate fresh air, beautiful, fresh oxygen. And I think I've been following you since the Chicago days, because I think I remember seeing like, yo, we're in Florida now and, and stuff. Oh, like yeah. That. Yeah, so it, it's unfortunate, man. Like we live in a blue city in a red state. So uh, I have I have little little daughters and stuff, and we try to take them to the park because we were all just going crazy. It felt like everything was locked down forever. My stand up comedy tour was uh was on ice thanks to you know Fauci the bureaucrat, and we'd go to the parks and there's like caution tape on the monkey bars, like caution tape all around the slides, and I'm like, yo, they're I never knew what it was like in the USSR where they shut down like outlawed religion and got rid of churches. And, and yeah. I got a sense of, of what it must feel like in like this dystopian China of some sort. Cause I'm like, this does not feel like America. Like they don't want you to sing. They're trying to kill friendship, family. They're just dividing us. Well, and they've, they've, they've successfully done that. Unfortunately, what they've done is they put a wedge between friends and family that can never be restored again. And, and, and it's by, it's, you know, it's, it's by this perfect, like, uh, uh, what they want it, what they want it to be. They wanted the control. Then they wanted all of us to be against each other. And so, I mean, I have, thank God I have more mostly conservative family members. I mean, we're all liberal minded, right? Conservative doesn't mean that you're this like really crazy right leaning, like, no, I'm conservative fiscally. I'm liberal uh, in my everyday life, socially, you know, but we've, we've come to a place where it's like, F you, like, you don't want to wear, can I swear on this show? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely, bro. Oh, you, you, the like, fuck you, you don't want to wear a mask, I want to wear a mask, fuck you, you didn't get the vaccine, this, that, and that's a couple family members that I'll never talk to again, because I think they, I, I literally think that liberalism is a mental disorder, <laughs> like, I think they're mentally challenged. <laughs> Dude, I said the same thing. Mental yeah. illness. It sounds. It almost sounds like a reset, right? Some sort of reset. Well, well, I, I was, I was like liberal by default because I didn't know no better. I was just kind of like, "What are you?" I guess I'm Catholic, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, you never go to church. Like, I don't, I, I wasn't a real Catholic, and it's like, so Democrat, Republican. It's like, well, aren't Republicans like the old white guys that are just about the corporations and they love war, and then these people are like Kennedy and they're nice and they Obama and they speak well and they're nice and they attack your um. Your empathy, they, they use your empathy yeah. against you. If you have a big heart and you care about the homeless and you care about immigrants, dude, I'm the son of immigrants. So of course it, they got me with the rhetoric. Yeah. They didn't, yeah. I never kept the open mind long enough to be like, okay, well, let me hear what you got to say about national security and sovereignty and the economy and wages and how it affects minorities and the human trafficking and the fentanyl. And I, I would argue that the border today in its current state of chaos is like nothing we've ever seen. And for the longest, bro, I was like, Mr. They can't deport us all. No human is illegal looking at <laughs> Like, I was like, you're typical. Like, this is stolen land, you know. I didn't want to hear it. But, oh, mm -hmm. 
now we're all colonizers. You, look, look, I'm also the son of an immigrant. My parents came here from Italy. I'm first generation born in the United States. Okay. Uh, nobody dislikes migrants from Mexico. We all love migrants from Mexico. Nobody, nobody doesn't want that country to come in here. The problem that other people don't open their mind to is Mexico isn't the immigrants that we have to worry about as much as the other 86 different countries filtering in through the Mexican border yeah. to get to the United States. Like it, when you have Syrian refugees that are coming in through the southern southern border to bring fentanyl, and these are people, mind you, that are beheading and throwing people off of buildings for being gay in those countries that now want to infiltrate through our southern border to cause havoc in the United States. That's a fucking problem, bro. That is a fucking problem. Nobody has ever had issues with Mexicans coming in through our border legally to create better lives for their families. Fuck, uh, who doesn't have Taco Tuesday? Everybody loves fucking Mexicans. Yeah. It's the other countries that are trying to use that border to come through. And it's fucking mind blowing to me that nobody knows that. It's like, we're not against Mexico. We're not against Mexicans. <laughs> But the cartel type shit and the coyotes and the human right, that's fucked and up. y'all messing with the kids and y'all got the rape tree with the with the panties hanging on the branches and all right. this all this like okay, bro, like Mexican Americans, a lot of them have just written me off. It's like, oh, you a sellout coconut, you want to be white. And and they won't I I I I urge them to listen to this portion of what we discussed. Uh first of all, man, I need you to get your teacup so you could Okay. All right. If, if y'all are not following conservative ant on Instagram, <laughs> uh, man, I could just I'm tell, bro. Instagram getter, uh, truth social. I have a YouTube channel. I've been trying to dabble on a little bit, but there's a great documentary that somebody came out and did on me. So if you want to learn a little bit more about me, there is a documentary there on my YouTube. And then I just got back on Twitter because I was like, there's so much shit going on on Twitter right now that I don't know about. Like, I got to get back on it. And the only reason why I left the first time was I wasn't banned. I wasn't censored. But it was, like, in retaliation because they took took Trump down. Yeah. So I was like, fuck you, I'm out. Yeah. And now I had to go back. So I'm on there as well. Conservative and on all platforms. Yeah, so make sure y'all follow him. Very funny, man. Because what I get what I get a kick out of it is that, like, the first five, six, seven seconds is just you trying to gather. You just... <laughs> Like the tea's hot, the tea's hot, and yeah, you give him a pop, and then you point him at the thing. Peppermint patty. <laughs> this raggedy, this yeah. raggedy bitch. Yeah, this bitch got a lot of nerve. So I, I left a comment. I was like, yo, you need to do stand-up, because just off the top, you're already funnier than a lot of uh up and coming stand up comedians no offense you're like let me choose these words one nah, i mean there's a lot of open micers and shit that they just don't have the stage presence they, have the chops. they don't understand stage uh, uh, uh they don't understand humor like shit you you're from chicago so and, and then you come from an, an italian family uh, we're probably, yeah exactly. yeah there's shit talking all the time so uh i highly encourage that we could talk about it um after the show you know, but like what I would love to do, and and this is this is where I was because I had other stand up comedians that have been kind of traveling or doing open mic stuff. They're like, dude, you have to come and do. And I'm I'm like, I've never done stand like I, what what do I do? They're like, just do you like just talk about what you talk about on stage. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe if I dabble in like hosting a comedy show. Yes. 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 And then throwing in my like three minutes and be like, all right, and then like present whoever's coming out i think i might be able to dabble that way so listen man i could link you up with um off the hook comedy club they're out of naples uh i don't know what other comedy clubs are in that area like fort myers and stuff but yeah. um but yeah that's a great strategy if you just host first because if you have a likable personality if you're already good at facial expressions and you and telling stories and using your hands and just under, and like i said you're from an italian family you're from Chicago, you know how to probably roast and you know what I'm saying? So uh, all that, you know, Sebastian Menasalco, 
is one of my favorite Chicago born and raised Italian stand up comic comics. And mm -hmm. what he does, what he taps into is look, it's all relatable, right? Everybody can relate to this shit, but like he's got those facial expressions. He's got the, you know, he's got the, the, the physicality. Right. He's charismatic. He's the animated. Attitude. Like that's what it is. I, girl, I book, I got that shit all day. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's a, he has a lot of attitude and a lot of energy. And I love how he he's he's got to be one of my favorites too. Top five. Because he'll be like, yeah. it's super relatable to Mexicans as well. Because in Spanish, you'd say, no te avergüenza. Yeah. No te avergüenza. It's, aren't oh, you bad? Yeah, no, aren't you bad? He's like, he's like, no tiene vergonha. Like, you're not. No you're not vergonza. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, people, Latinos and Italians are very very similar yeah. because we have the same family uh values and morals we're catholic usually and don't you, you know like with your grandparents like living on top of each other basically you know yeah oh, always well you, technically you're not supposed to leave your parents house until you're married right unfortunately i didn't go that route <laughs> i i decided it's going to be the gay way for me I, let me tell you, if my dad could have thrown the kitchen table through the window that day, <laughs> he'd have the kitchen table through the window that day. So speaking of that, uh, have you gotten any flack from the gay community for being conservative and so outspoken? Oh, local? oh they don't claim me. Well, I can't believe that we're claiming people in 2022. This is coming from the same people that say, oh, my God, racism, this, that. Yeah. But now they're the first ones to be like, we don't claim you. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were feeding me, financing, and fucking me. So now you're claiming me now. I know you and put me on whole, your taxes. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> right? yeah. This whole community, bitch, I'm not part of your little, you know, they like to box you out, put you in I this box. It. I'm not part of your community, girl. I'm part of the community where I live in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the town I live. That's the community. Uh, so, yeah, they wrote me off a long time ago. They, they, and I'm fine with it. Well, because the stereotype is that conservatives and Republicans and everybody on the right is anti-everything. They're Islamophobe, transphobe, uh, xenophobic. Um, that's the stereotype, right? That there's, like, no gay people on the right. Well, his thing, his camera went off? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah there you, there you go. Yeah, so that, that's the stereotype. Same thing with Latinos. It's kind of like, how could you? How dare you? It's like you're going against your people. You forgot where you came from. It's like, bro, Joe Biden is this dude ain't from Mexico, bro. Like, how is this my people? How is Kamala my people? <laughs> and so when, when did you when did you really start to be politically uh, outspoken online? Uh, so I would probably say it was in the 2016 political climate. Um, I actually went to school for broadcasting in my 30s. So I wanted to be. I wanted to be a news anchor or a field reporter without having the journalism background. And so I went through the, the radio and broadcasting route. When they found out I was a conservative, because, you know, they're like, oh, who do you look up to as a journalist? And I said, Tucker Carlson. And they're like, oh, like they went in full meltdown mode. And I was like, he's the only one that's literally calling everybody out. Like, I, I love Tucker Carlson, but... Nevertheless, so I went through that, and then basically they were telling they they had said to me that if I didn't if I didn't let down like knock down a couple of walls, meaning don't be conservative, be a little bit more liberal, the doors are not going to open up for you. And I thought to myself, "Wow, that's fucked up. That's fucked up." So I kind of took a step back, and then when the pandemic happened, I had done a rant online, um, and it went viral. Oh, what did you say, dude? What'd you say? I was just like they had they had shut Chicago down for another 30 days. And at the same time, they were having the BLM riots and people were shoulder to shoulder on the streets nationwide while everybody else is locked down and we apparently can't go get our haircuts. We can't do all this shit. So I was literally at the dinner table and I slammed my hands on the table. I'm like, you mean to fucking tell me that y'all can stand side by side nationwide with no masks on while you're burning shit up and we're stuck in the house and we can't see our families? We can't fucking go to school. We can't go to work. We can't eat. Well, like, what, what is really going on here? Yeah. And people are like, yes, preach. And I woke yeah. up the next day and this video went viral. And then I started to get, I said, you know what? I can do this again. Like there, I started finding like the conservative side of social media and creators and influencers. I'm like, 
okay, I recollect my thought, brought what I had in from broadcasting and all the other stuff. And I just put it, put it back in, into this and it, it rolled. I mean, it, it did great. And if you meet me in person, I'm the same. Like there's no uh, difference yeah, between yeah, yeah. who I am in person and who I am. It's literally just my personality. Yeah. The, the tea is hot in real life. <laughs> and I just, Tickle the balls a little bit before I go to tea balls. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, pay attention. Don't, right. neglect, don't neglect the huevitos. <laughs> no, we have a class for the ladies so we can show them. It's called the one-on-one, <laughs> the tickle one-on-one. I'm, I'm going to send this clip to my wife. She'll be like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm on it. We good. We good. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so that, that's a really interesting story, how you were able to take your, um, your, your, broadcasting background and then for this to just kind of like happen by mistake all based off a very good observation which is wait a minute we don't have to be experts on color revolutions and marxism and coups and fake propaganda but explain this to me because like you said it best it's like people were literally being gaslit like you're having to stay your ass in your house follow the rules and obey but we're going to make an exception because racism is something, whatever, right? Because yeah. George Floyd and cops are bad and whatever other rhetoric they were putting out there. Ant must be, right. trying, must be trying to get a hold of Ant. His phone, his camera keeps going off. You, you getting you phone know, well, My computer was acting slow, so that's why I'm not at my desk right now. And I'm, I'm like, like I got to get on this Zoom. So I just did it from my phone. No, that's fine. They, they must know you're phone. on uh, with Chingo. They're trying to shut you down. Right? My right, FBI, FBI has answered the chat. Yeah, <laughs> CIA is in here. So, hey, you, at Chicago, what was the last straw? Like, what made you now become a uh, you know refugee from from Florida, Chicago? Florida. Yeah. Florida. Well, I started to realize that people in these states have really lost their damn minds, and like it, it's it's sad, especially when you come from cities like Chicago, New York, like these big cities where we do have big balls, or we used to, and we used we like we used to say you got to remember. These are big, like, Italian, Latino, Black populations. Like, we don't take shit from people, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, our, that's our fucking DNA. Yeah. But I was like, yo, everybody here is weird. <laughs> like, it made people weird. It made, and we were coming to Florida already. We were kind of escaping, you know, ha having, like, a weekend and coming down to Fort, Fort, Lauder uh, Fort Myers. And finally, we were just like, let, let's get out of here. Let's put the house up. It's a good time to put the house on the market. We'll, we'll go down to Florida. We don't even want to buy. We're just going to rent right now. And we're just going to enjoy it. Look, if they're going to lock us down, I would much rather be locked down where I know that I can go outside and spend time. Cause it's not, it's not easy on your mental health when you live in a, in a, a, a part of the country where it's gloomy and, and snowy and rainy for six, seven months out of the year. And then you're stuck in your house. It's, it's yeah. not good on anybody's mental health. So I, we just, we literally sold it all and, and came down to Florida and it's the best decision we ever made. And you know what? It's a good point you made that Chicago's DNA. Cause I, I, I've spent a little bit of time in Chicago. So in Chicago, some of the lingo, some of the slang is this, like say if, if Rob came in here, he's like, dude, some fucking guy parked all up on me. It'd be like, did you move on him? Did you right. move on him? It's like, did you pressure him? Did you get in his grill? Like, like, uh, did you apply pressure? Right. Like Chicago don't play. Chicago invented gangs. Number one, you had John Gotti. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, um, not to mention oh. right? Vice Lords, you know, uh, all these different gangs. Uh, yeah. Kings and, and Chicago is one of those, like, you got the White Sox. You got the Cubs. You know, it, every, it was very... Um, like toxic, toxic machismo. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Toxic. Yeah, no, it's super com competitive. I mean, you're talking about, you're coming from a city that was resurrected by Al Capone and yeah, the Irish mob and like a lot of big time. Yeah, Al Capone, I said John Gotti, my bad. Uh, yeah, but, you know, in my family, when they came here, you know, in the 60s and 70s, and when they came to Chicago, they, they built Chicago. I mean, they really... You know, they built businesses and um, they said, what do we got to do to become citizens? Okay, this is what we got to do. We became American citizens. Boom, business, business, business. So it's just sad to me to see those people like 
they're they're not the same anymore. And I, I've called I've called Chicagoans out all the time. I can't I can't speak to you for New Yorkers because I'm not a New Yorker, but Chicagoans, I'm always like, what happened, you guys? Yeah. Like you're all walking around grocery stores and fucking masks and shit. Like we're supposed to walk into a place and be like, hey, fuck out of here. They're not fucking doing hey, that. Fuck out of here. And Chicago. Fuck out Chicago got some food too, man. Like because of all the immigrants and the Polish and the Italians and everything. What's that? Italian beef and sandwiches. Yeah. Like? Italian beef. And then there's that restaurant, uh, Portel Portillo's. What's it called? Port no. Yes. That's the name of it. Uh, yeah. well, they they make a, a chocolate shake with cake in it, bro. Ooh. They throw a whole piece of cake in that bitch. Talking my language now. Yes. Um, I've had a great time. Some of the best tacos I've ever had out of Chicago. I mean, like I said, Chicago. Yeah. Has Chicken food in in Chicago is so the the town that I lived in in Illinois was highly populated by Mexicans, and I remember, uh, you know, during the winter time there was a lady who used to sell tamales out of her car, and we would go to the supermarket specifically for her because I knew <laughs> in she a had, parking lot. She was just... I was like, oh, there that. she is, and I mean, so like the culture. That's what the thing about it is. The culture of big cities like that is so deep, like with all different kinds of foods and different people. And it's just sad oh, that yeah. these, people, these people that came from struggle are depending on the government to make them fucking struggle. Bro, make it make sense. Yeah, Chicago definitely is just like a tough, or well, maybe it was. I mean, I don't want to insult Chicago, but like, it's just like tough people. I mean, you have like, you know, all, like I said before, all these gangs, gangster disciples and the vice yeah. and all these different neighborhoods. The tough, yeah. The, 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 the village of the ether, like depending on what dog, they will check we, women. They'll run up on females like they got female gangs. One time we were at a, at a flea market. Everybody that had like a booth, whether, whether they're selling jewelry or knickknacks, whatever. Everybody had on the Latin Kings colors, like the whole staff, yeah. the ladies, the moms, the tias, the grandmas, everybody was Latin Kings up in there. And then you pull up in another neighborhood and you get out and you go eat or something. And um, at the time it was like two rapper homies and like a female that was doing like marketing or something, but she had like a couple tattoos. But anyway, they were spotted as like unfamiliar. They just like, do, 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 do. What the fuck is that? And they ran up on them like, hey, man, where you at? Where you from? Who you with? Da, da, da. And they're like, we're just trying to eat. And our people are in the restaurant. We're not from here. And, and now it's like, oh, my God, where's your mask? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, right. Exactly. Listen, um, I, I have friends with a couple of Latin Kings. They uh, are my booze because they always loved me. I was always flaco. <laughs> <laughs> flaco. <laughs> that was your, so your street name. Always, huh? That was your street name, like your gang name. And shit. That was my street name. No, I was never in a gang, but I was always friends with everybody. Like nobody really. I'm really not intimidated by people. Like it really doesn't. Like if they ain't got no beef with me, there's no reason for them to come at me. You know what I'm saying? Like if I didn't do it, because usually if these people got problems with you, it's it's probably because you fucked them over somehow. Their family, their friends, somebody. Money money and that ain't, that's not going to be me sorry yeah yeah so, so you, don't, you don't get intimidated you're like oh so you in the little gang <laughs> that's what's up <laughs> right. I'd be like, I that that's so cute. oh my god who did your tear drop <laughs> <laughs> right oh what's your flag colors <laughs> right and they'll probably give me a hug by the end of it you know yeah. Hey, Han, so talking about mental disorders are you have you kept up with what's happened over the last couple of uh maybe the last day with uh lives to tiktok oh man yeah, so um, that woman, uh, Kayla Loren, a, the, yeah, the journalist or the the one that got doxxed. Okay. Yeah, so I think she doxxed the woman of libs of TikTok or mm -hmm. something like that. Right. Here's what's so funny about it: they're so mad of the account libs of TikTok. They've literally just all they've done is taken the videos that liberals posted and reposted the very video. Yeah. With no commentary, no comment, no no edits, no nothing. No critique. Nothing. Nothing. Cut and dry. Raw. Just shining the and light. Like, you know what yeah. that was so dangerous too? I heard somebody make a really good point that people that are watching it on TikTok and are following it because they, they enjoy it or for whatever reason are in that bubble. And what Lives at TikTok was doing was showing it to people that aren't in that bubble. Which was so dangerous to the narrative of the left. Wait, wait, wait. So you're saying that 
by by a conservative account shining a light on it and putting it on display to other conservatives mm -hmm. it becomes a threat yeah to, what, how? Be because people outside of that ecosystem are now seeing what's happening because things how have the changed. teachers are behaving yeah because laws have been written things have changed because of that account because of lives of tiktok from what i've read yeah really what kind of In schools I'm, I'm not sure exactly specifically but things like things have changed just based off what they've shared with other people and then conservatives taking it and running and being like look what's happening so it's almost like it's evidence yeah exactly of the pre-k teachers right. saying oh uh my kids know that yeah. i'm gender fluid yada yada yeah wow. but here's the thing and, and and you know a lot of people have been saying this i'm I, i'm not the first person to say this in the last week or two when I'm 37, when did we ever know who our teacher was married to, let alone their first name? Like, I remember like yeah. hearing like a teacher's first name, and I was like, oh, "Look at that! Your name is Diane." <laughs> yeah. You know, and now it's like, why do we even have like nobody cares that you're a trans man married to a woman that like nobody gives a fuck. The point is, is why is it, why does it need to be talked about in school? Like, that's not why they're there, bro. Yeah. You know, like, and, and, you know, I think of my nieces and nephews, or I think of my neighbors or my friends and their little kids. Like when I, you know, just the other day I was at the pool with my neighbor and their two kids and their kids are like, you know, five and three. And, you know, we're having conversations about toys you know, just like, I bought this toy and I'm thinking, I look at the dad and I go, now, can you imagine somebody having that fucking nasty conversation with your son? Like, he's like, that's what I mean. Like, how can you even look at this little kid and be like, do you know what a pe like, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah. yeah. And that's what they're trying to defend. That, that, like, why are you so interested in having sex talk with kids? Like, why is this such a thing for you? And why are they so triggered for there to be boundaries? Like, like the, the DeSantis law, it, it's really just to third grade. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people argue like uh, it should be a little bit nice. I think like I, later. I, fifth grade. I think yeah. it should be up to fifth grade. But I guess, third, you know, I guess fourth graders are, are kind of starting to realize sexuality maybe a little bit. So I, I, I get that. But. Yeah, for you but, to call it a don't say gay bill, bro. It's it doesn't even say that in the bill. And, and not to mention, like any like the argument of like, well, fourth graders, uh, like I saw this one clip of a teacher who was like, you'd be surprised, you know, they see it on social media. A lot of these kids have cell phones and they're ready to talk about it, they're ready to learn. And it's like, okay, learn actual biology and actual science or rhetoric and um this other imaginary science, you know, whatever this new, like, well, you know, there's 186 genders and. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the thing is, is basically what needs to happen is the parental bill, which is really what it is. It's a parental bill. It's a parental rights bill. Yeah. What needs to happen is basically when the child comes to a teacher and says, Hey, Mr. Ant, um, you know, I kind of want to be a girl. All the, the, the teacher's main job is to be like, you know what, why don't you go ahead and talk to your parents about it and, you know, go back, sit back in your seat, like, go ahead and talk to your parents about it. Then call the parents and be like, yo, yeah. just let you know, this is what happened in school today. You might want to have a conversation with your kid. That's it. That's their job. Instead, yeah, instead they want the state to uh, become the parent and wedge themselves between the kid and the parent and basically saying, uh, you don't have to tell your parents that you go by Susie at school and that you change right. clothes. Right. I mean, this is, it's, it's just insanity. And, you know, I, I had somebody send me um, an email the other day. This is going over into corporate, the corporate world too now, where it's like these people in this corporate, I, I can't say what company it is, but in this corporate field, they are, they have until, April, the end of April, I think it was April 28th, to change their signature on their email, uh, make sure that they have their pronouns on there. Otherwise, they will lose their job. Why the fuck are you making me choose a fucking pronoun? And why is that relevant in the corporate world? If somebody sent me a fucking email that had a pronoun on it, that's automatically going to trash and spam. 
I mean, it's one thing for somebody. Yeah, it's one thing for somebody to choose to do that on their own. It's another thing to force people. And it's another thing to like, like some would argue it's like a Marxist ritual. Like it's almost like trying to divide people from who are the obedient ones that are going to be down with the plan and who are the ones that keep like I know at the airport, all the, the bubble cameras. I know they don't they already got my face like this food on never wear a oh. mask. And, oh, yeah. he, and he loves to go sit down and chit chat with these other people with flags on their on their hats and shit. And we'll <laughs> hey. be doing domestic areas. I mean, I mean, that's what they're going to probably try to label it. They do. They know. They know. I, I, I've waited. I've been waiting for an FBI agent to show up at my door just because my content is so like pro-American. And I would probably invite them in for coffee. I'd be like, you want to come in and have a cup of coffee and talk about how the government is not here for you either? Oh, yeah. And that's a skit. That's a skit. It needs to be like, doom, doom. And it's like, <laughs> hey, we're here with the FBI. And it's like, oh, my, you know, hey, come on in. I've been come waiting on. for you. Yeah, yeah. Come on I'll in. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> how many more memes did I have to post for you to be here? <laughs> right. Like, Can I right. see my file? What do you have? What do you have on me? <laughs> oh, I it's like, it's just like when they go to airports, they're like, yo, it's the Latino dude that wears American flags. All right, watch him through the airport. Watch him through the airport. We got him. He's sitting next to two white guys. We got him. We yeah. got him. Swarm. And I travel so much <laughs> that they're like, yeah, this motherfucker in Tacoma right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you the address. Yeah. And then I'm always getting stuck. Like there's always some layover or like a canceled flight. So it's like, that's why the canceled flight got canceled. They, they, they knew I was on that bitch. Yep. They got it's not perfect. They know. That's crazy. And so going back to what uh, you said it, w- that day, to go back to like the middle of the podcast, you said you, your dad would have thrown the table out the window. How yeah. does that, how does that, how do you evolve from that day to where you are today? You know, I, um, I think that it's important for people that are coming out or people that are having a different life change, whether it be you're transitioning to a trans person, whatever the situation may be. That's a lot for a parent to take in. So I don't think people really give enough empathy to the parent in that situation. So what's different about me is I took a step back and when we had the conversation, you know, I gave him time to breathe, but I think that when I went back and we had that conversation, I said, look, I understand that this is different for you. Like, I understand that I'm the oldest son. So when you had me and you look, I mean, you guys are parents or you're a parent, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you look at your kid, like parents, like subconsciously think of the future of their kid. Like, this is my baby. They're going to get married one day. They're going to have kids. I'm going to be a grandfather. I'm going to, you know, all these great things. I crushed, I stopped that for him. I crushed that. Yeah, I was talking about playing baseball with my boy yesterday. So if he tells me he doesn't want to play baseball, he wants to do something else. (laughs) He crushed. Right. But that's what I mean. Like, nobody's like, everyone's like, oh my God, are you okay that you just came out? I'm fine. Like, you need to think about... Nobody thinks about the parents in this situation. And so long story short, as he, and I think that he was worried that, that I was going to change, like, because he had this old school mentality that like, you're gay now. What does that mean? You're going to walk into a party. You're going to have heels on. What's the family going to do? <laughs> Relax before we run to the family. Cause everyone's like, oh my God, what is your aunt going to say? Who gives a fuck? but I wasn't like that. Like, I still like to chill with the dudes. I chill. I still like to watch sports. I don't play sports, but I'll watch them. I'm still a guy. Like at the end of the day, I'm a guy, you know? So nothing's changing on that sense. So as he started to see that me and him now are best friends, like we talk every day. That's great. And and so, and, and that's it. I think that you just have to have a little bit of like, oh shit, my parents are going through something too. Nobody thinks that. Yeah, man. So uh, next time we're in Florida, we're definitely going to try to swoop through uh, Fort Myers. Say what's up. If you're ever in Texas, uh, hit us up. And uh, Small World, because uh, Chad Prather had reached out as well. So that, that's pretty dope. That we yeah, he's actually going to be at Off the Hook. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Very cool. I think month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try to go. Um, you should, yeah, go check it out and maybe Chad will introduce you to the people there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it'd be great. And if you guys ever want to come down Fort Myers way and you just want, like, y- y'all can stay here. Dope. Like, my great. Like, I got an extra room. Like, I got, I got a bunch of kids and shit. So, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, shit. Like, God damn, Chingo. I said, you, man, you, maybe your wife. It's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> people. Yeah, aren't you embarrassed? 
But hey, man, uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, you know, we'd love to have you on again in the future. Uh, everybody, make sure you follow Conservative Ant online and support everything he has going on. And we appreciate you, man. You're making people laugh and you're informing and educating at the same time. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show today. Anytime thank you want. Thank you, man. Have a great day, brother. You too, guys. Peace.